Hello guys, my name is Amit Sunny and I welcome you in this daily PIP analysis video. In the evening, these videos come. In the morning, the Hindu editorial videos they come. And please don't leave any of these lessons. And if you like these lessons, then please share it among your friends and your relatives, uh, because uh, these are important and sharing is important. 26th of March it is, and very fast the time is running. And uh, Let's move forward. These are the numbers there you can call and you can ask for these pendrive courses by Study IQ. Telegram channels link is given in the last page and uh, you will find the PDF there. And a Facebook group is also there. MCQ one that I gave to you yesterday, section 126 of the Representation of People's Act 1951. According to this section, there are restrictions, there are foundations, there are certain guidelines which are to be followed and uh, these uh, television channels or the similar apparatuses they cannot actually display anything related with election matter and what is the time when the the polling would be ended that would be concluded uh, in a particular constituency from that particular hour and 48 hours before that means if today evening if 7 uh, the PM if the conclusion is there for the polls in my constituency then today is uh, 26th of March then 25th and 24th means 24th 7 p.m. till 26th 7 p.m. it would be the time where no uh, matter related, related to elections that can be displayed so 48 hours is the correct answer for that and you see according to 126a exit polls are totally prohibited and uh, in at what time they are prohibited suppose if the polling starts uh, tomorrow morning then the hour when it is going to start from that particular hour till the polling would conclude and half an hour after that in this particular time no exit polls are allowed exit polls means when people are coming out after voting so the name is taken from their exit polls and you see when elections are going on in multiple phases and you see uh, if they are happening in multiple phases then till the time the last phase ends till that time no exit poll is allowed and this was the thing where uh, these news channels and all they were flouting this norm and that became a huge issue because they were influencing the voters because in the next phases many people would be voting and because of these exit polls after polling in, in a, a particular constituency people are influenced that this party is winning so we should vote for that so uh, the, these things are, are not allowed you see opinion polls they are allowed they are a problem today but exit polls are banned and the timing as I told you from the time the poll begins till the time polling ends and uh, after, after conclusion conclusion of the elections half an hour after that till that time the exit polls are not allowed after that uh, they may show some things with a disclaimer that uh, these are not final results and all and uh, that thing would not affect because polling has been over next these all statements are correct because i am putting here the same text which is there by press council of india for uh, the press that how they should behave they should not eschew uh, sorry they should not uh, display any kind of a uh, provocative emotional uh, report and uh, whether it is true or it is false they should not show it and they should not canvas a particular candidate or a particular party if they are doing that then they should give equal opportunity to the opposite candidate also and uh, they should not uh, accept these kind of advertisement where public exchequer money is used so these are important things Next, the new chief of naval staff is Vice Admiral Karamvir Singh. The convention has been broken again the way when General Bipin Rawat was appointed the, as the military's head. And now the chief for naval staff has been chosen and he has been appointed. And uh, one Mr. Burma, Vice Admiral Burma was senior to him, but he is chosen as the next chief. So B is the correct answer here next pakistan's national day is on 23rd of march this is right but it was not 1946 it was 1940 when a lahore declaration that was announced and uh, according to that they made it sure that they would not accept any kind of other option than creating pakistan so in 1940 it was totally decided and finalized so 
इन कमेमोरेटिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर डिक्लेरेशन दे हैव इरेक्टेड मीनार ए पाकिस्तान इन पाकिस्तान इन लाहौर so only two is the correct answer here this is not 1946 it is 1940 here so only two is the correct answer next ministry of defense data ins kadamat is going to represent india at langkawi malaysia what is happening there 15th edition of langkawi international maritime and aerospace exhibition it was in uh, much highlight when uh, some controversy was going on regarding uh, india's uh, light combat aircraft and uh, some uh, aircraft from pakistan whether they are going to take part here or not and uh, it was somewhat controversial and now the data is that ins kadamat its indigenous stealth anti submarine warfare corvette okay and it was commissioned into the indian navy in january 2016 only so it's very recent it's a new one an indigenously developed stealth anti submarine warfare corvette and uh, this is going to represent india there and you can see the artillery the gun system that has been installed here and it is going to be used in uh, any kind of war like situation so this is that is important and this lima 19 is happening in malaysia langkawi is in malaysia and 15th edition okay next ministry of hrd's data they are giving a particular clarification on these particular schemes because some confusion is there in the media regarding that and they are clarifying that no directive is there from our side to restrict choice of subjects for research because these particular research schemes were launched 2 3 years back impress was regarding social sciences imprint was regard regarding innovation technology stride spark academic research and all so uh, they all were given a particular allocation of money you can see here and that is legitimate one and the same way they are going and they have made a road plan for the areas for the particular uh, states where research is lacking so the chancellor vice chancellors of 11 central universities they have been called in this meeting uh, happened last year and they decided about uh, th uh, their execution there next ministry of defense exercise al naga 3 we discussed it in the beginning of march it started on 12th of march and it went for two weeks and now it has concluded it was a joint military training exercise between indian army and royal oman army okay remember the location look look in the map and uh, always uh, note this thing that is it a joint military training exercise or is it a joint naval exercise so that is important joint military training exercise okay and two week long exercise had commenced on 12th of march as i told you tactical operations based on scenarios that are likely to be encountered in semi urban and mountainous terrains and the counter terrorism and all all these uh, particular situations are practiced here and it was important al naga between india and oman so you basically may confuse you uh, by telling this is, is it between uh, in uh, are navies of uh, these two nations or armies uh, sorry militaries of two nations next chinook helicopters they have been inducted in indian air force ch 47 fi is the name of the model chinook chinook is a foreign wind in america chinook can melt down huge amounts of uh, uh, snow in a northern american uh, uh, planes and it's very important so that you can remember chinook with that boeing is the company which has manufactured it and in september 15 uh, we signed a contract indian air force had signed a contract with ms boeing for 15 chinook helicopters four has been delivered and the rest of them will be delivered till march next year so this is important what is the most uh, important highlight that it has twin engine and it's a heavy lifter you can see in the picture it is taking howitzer 777 artillery gun system and uh, it can lift heavy weights and it can take up to 20000 feet of height so it is extremely important in the northern uh, areas and the eastern areas or eastern borders of india where hostile and mountainous terrains are there so chinook is going to be very very helpful it can take up to 47 troops so very very, very important and fully integrated digital cockpit management system is there advanced cargo handling system is there so uh, chinook you must remember this may be asked this year next information that is also very very important that is abhed the system it's a facility for nuclear biological chemical training 
you see till now we were practicing the, all these things in theory we did not have a particular training system training facility there within india now it has been created and ins shivaji has been chosen for that ins shivaji is there in lonawala and uh, ms gsl was the company that signed the contract and within time they had delivered this particular facility they handed over the facility to indian navy on 28th of september 2018 only and now we have uh, started it this unique facility will assist indian navy in providing realistic simulations of nuclear chemical and biological warfare to its personnel and uh, during nbc damage means nuclear biological and chemical chemical damage and it's a control training that would be provided under it so it's an important upgradation and uh, it was extremely needed you see when in japan in 2011 all these nuclear facilities and all they were flooded and uh, it was a huge disaster so in these kind of situations these uh, exercises are the biggest help and they, these are the people out of this experience they are going to help in those situations so india is ready now for that and this is important next yuva vigyani karyakram uv ka scheme this program it is not a scheme it's a program it is by isro indian space research organization they had launched it under the catch them young program what is catch up them catch them young program means they are targeting school children for that and under this program they are going to select three school kids from every state and union territory okay and uh, marks of 8th uh, class are going to be taken here and uh, they will create a list from all these states and residential training for 2 weeks would be provided in four isro's facilities four different centers uh, are, are going to be there and there they will be given all these uh, trainings so they will stay there for 15 days and uh, uh, they all will learn about the space technologies india's uh, space programs and uh, they will be shown all these uh, facilities and uh, whatever our programming is so that they can develop their interest in this very important area okay and the students who are entering uh, 10th class and uh, the summer vacation is going on after 9th class they will be chosen for that and the marks of their 8th class its standard would be counted here so it is important and the department of space is giving data this department department of space is directly coming under pmo remember that it is not coming under ministry of defense or ministry of science and technology or ministry of earth science it is directly under pmo that you remember and young scientist program uvika it is by isro online registrations are open now from 25th of march next these are the mcqs try their answers try the additional data and the related information and please spread these lessons and don't leave with these lessons any day thanks a lot keep watching it was amit sani and the pdf you will get on this particular group and the telegram link is also given thanks a lot